Welcome back to the Crooked River and Eastern Railroad. Hey guys, tonight I'm going to paint up the rails on this new crossover I put in. Uh, weather them up a little bit. Thought I'd show a little video on how I do that. So, first I, in my little cup here, I mixed up a little rusty brown for the rails. I used um, brown oxide. Put a nice generous drop of the tangerine in there. Small drop of the yellow, and just a tiny drop of the red. So I think it's going to match pretty well. Uh, we'll give it a shot here and see. And basically all I'm going to do is just, I'm going to be pretty sloppy with it, just going to hit the rails. So I just want to try to blend it in a little bit, make it look like it's been here. I'll go past a little bit into the, to the stuff that's already here. I'm going to make sure I cover these insulated joiners too to kind of hide them. It's just a matter of getting it in. <clears throat> I even hit these uh, fake plastic ones. The only thing is when you do get to the points here, so make sure you don't paint them in place. And it's not rocket science, I mean you just kind of go pretty quickly through it. I said I get pretty sloppy, just make sure I got it all coated. I try to get a little on the, um, the little nut and bolt heads that you see uh, on most of your track. Yeah, I, I slop it in there, man. I mean, not, not to gum it up or anything, I just make sure I slop it uh, a little bit onto the ties. Because I'm going to paint the ties anyways, and that's going to be a little less sloppy. It's going to be a little more tedious with that. So, but I want to get these nut and bolt heads. When I do the tie work, um, those will show a little bit still. The way I do it by hand. There's a lot of guys that do it, you know, with a spray can, and that's great. I didn't want the fumes in my basement. I like doing it like this anyways. It's kind of relaxing, I guess, therapeutic, if you will. And this is just a small area, so it's actually easier to do this this way than to try to screw around dragging out everything for the airbrush and get all that set up. I'm pretty sure I got everything covered pretty well. Be a little too brown. Let's see. It may orange up a little bit more when it when it dries. This is a main line, so I don't really want it too rusty or dirty and rusty. On my yards, I do really orange. I, I like that real rusty look in our yards. I think it looks cool. All right, and this is just craft paint, like I showed you, and it's not uh, hard to clean up. Like I'll take a track eraser or something, I'll go over top of the rails to clean the rails off, you know. You guys can see as it's drying up, it's actually mm, probably a little more red than the red, or a little more orange than the other main line. But you know, the nice thing about that is once I get the top of the rails off, you're not going to see it as much. Once I start to ballast it, that it's going to kind of get a whitish color over top of it, you know, to kind of dull it. So it'll be just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll show you what I'm going to use for the, for the ties. Instead of brown oxide, I'm going to use burnt umber, mostly. I'll do a little drop of black. And I'll also put a little drop of the barn red in there. So let me get that mixed up. I'll be right back. Let this dry a little bit. And then we'll go from there. Alright, I'll be right back. Alright guys, so I'm back. I uh, cleaned up the rails. I ended up using just one of these uh, sanding blocks. I did not use the rougher side, I used the uh, little gentler side. I don't usually clean my tracks with that kind of stuff, but um, just to get this paint off, it, it, it was easier. So I got them pretty nice and clean. So I mixed up my tie color. It's pretty uh, dark brown. Because there's no ballast here, it's kind of nice. I'm just basically going right along the end ties here. Trying to leave a little bit of that uh, rusty bolt exposed. You know, I was up front with you guys, it is tedious work. Like I said, this is personal preference. It's simple. Yeah, and, and the nice thing about it is um, 
it is going to be ballasted so if there is any little imperfections most of it unless you really stop and count every tie and all that you know it's not too bad and I just go right down the middle here too the middle of the ties I kind of like how I make it kind of dark like this because uh, you know when you put the ballast down you'll see the difference here um, between this and this, this is nice and dark fresh brown when you get that ballast dust uh, on the tie so it kind of weathers it uh, on its own really, it kind of gives it its own weathering so I don't get too crazy if this isn't perfect because you know first of all I'm not going around counting every tie this will be the last time I look at these ties probably I do try to make sure that I don't have like gobs of it on in between the in between the, uh, the ties, you know. I save all my ties when I when I did all the flex track. You know, you cut some pieces of flex and you get all the little extra ties laying around and stuff. I save all those pieces because you got to put those back in. You know, like I said in here, when I had the, there's a couple pieces here, a couple pieces here on this on this little in between track. So, works out nice. Again, I like how I make it kind of dark like this because, uh, you know, when you put the ballast down, you'll see the difference here um, between this and this. This is nice and dark, fresh brown. You want to do the ballast, and you're doing all that sweeping the ballast in between. You get that ballast dust uh, on the tie, so it kind of weathers it on its own. Really, it kind of gives it its own weathering. The dusty looking weathering anyways so I'm not gonna bore you with me doing all of this but you get the you get the idea it's really simple it's just um, time consuming if I do get these bolt heads you know if I do accidentally hit them it's all right a lot of it's gonna be I'm not that noticeable once you get the ballast on it and uh, I'm not gonna go back over and hit them again that has some more detail in it too Guys, I think actually it looks pretty good. So, thanks again for watching. I hope it was informative. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll do my best to answer them. If I don't have the answer, I will see if I can direct you to some place where you can find it. I have a lot of newer listeners. Some of you guys are pretty new to the hobby, the younger guys, younger kids. So, you know, I'm not an expert at any of this, but, you know, I am very grateful for those that, you know, helped me out when I first got back into this a couple years ago. This is a very helpful, very generous, caring community that we belong to with this, with this hobby. And I am more than willing to pass on what I know as far as how I do it. Again... This is my way. It's not the only way. It is not necessarily the, you know, like I said, the only way, the right way, but it's, it's, it's my way. <clears throat> so, uh, again, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. I'm, my goal this year is to grow the channel a little bit more, to do more of these how-to videos or how I do videos, um, more operations and switching. I would like to do more live feeds. I'll be ballasting this when it's all good and dry. Maybe I'll try to come on live and do that. You know, it's not a huge area. It shouldn't take too, too long to ballast. So, stay tuned for that. Again, thanks for watching. I will talk to you later. You guys take it easy. Have a good night.